everyone welcome back to my channel this is Heidi from my reading life and I'm here today to do a recent reads video um, and it's a little bit of a hybrid so there'll be recent reads now and then at the end of the video there'll be some vlog style footage of some things that I filmed uh, previously in the month and I haven't had a chance to put together into a video yet so it's been a while since I have posted a video um, I don't think I've posted anything since my last uh, mid-month book bash vlogmas video and it's just been incredibly incredibly busy around here as it always is on the run-up to Christmas. So today is Wednesday December 22nd and this is my last day of work before my Christmas vacation. So I am taking um, from tomorrow through January th I'll be back to work on January 3rd so through January 2nd off and it's just going to be a stay-at-home vacation and I am so much looking forward to it and hoping to get a lot of reading done. And reading is why we're here today. Um, I don't have very much time, so I just want to quickly check in with you about four books that I've completed um, since uh, basically the mid-month book bash. The first one is the audiobook I was working on, Cushiel's Chosen by Jacqueline Carey. I talked about in my last vlog, I believe. This is an epic fantasy novel. It's book two in the Cushiel series, um, which follows a, a young woman named Phaedra who is an anguissette, which is a person who experiences pleasure with pain um, in all forms. And she was trained as a, um, basically a spy by her mentor. And I don't want to get into too much of the detail because it is book two. And this is a very, very um, detailed, like I said, epic fantasy with lots of political intrigue, a huge cast of characters, tons of factions of this government um, and this nation and you're following all these different people and trying to figure out who is uh, in league with who and trying to capture power and money. And it is awesome. If the characterizations are done so well, the political intrigue is done really well, the religious uh, underpinnings of the whole system, which is a very different uh, religious tenants to what we would know today in the modern world but there are some similarities as well um you'll see some there are some uh different religions that you will be able to identify with and know like one is very clearly a stand-in for the jewish identity um so yeah it's just a very detailed and very excellently drawn uh epic fantasy series that i love and they're very well done on audiobook too so if you like fantasy books and on audio i would highly encourage you to try um, the Cushiel series. The first book is Cushiel's Dark. I then finished a my romance novel that I was working on. This I read in ebook form, a portrait of a Scots, a portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore. This is, I think, the third book in her sort of um, suffragette romance series. It takes place uh, in the late 1800s in England. Our main character is Hattie, who is involved. She's at college. She comes from a wealthy aristocratic family, um, but she's been allowed to go to college. And um, she has gotten involved in the suffragette movement. Um, but in this story, she uh, gets, uh, she sort of develops this interest and attraction in this very uh not appropriate man um he is a wealthy businessman but he is not at all aristocratic um and he is looking for an in with her family who are wealthy aristocrats and they get caught in a compromising position kissing and are forced into marriage and so that's sort of the premise for the whole story um i was disappointed in this book i've really enjoyed this series i really like the main female characters in each of the three books and i did like hattie in this one as well the problem that i had with this book is there's not enough romance um there is just mostly preaching to you about issues of um, women's rights and unionizing and the horrible conditions that working class people lived under, particularly in the mining industry, um, because most of this book takes place in Scotland where uh, our, our hero, Lucian, is um, the owner of a mine and he is committed to making it the best um, situation that he can for the people that work in this mine because that's the background that he comes from and so he understands this community um and all of that is fascinating information and if i was reading a non-fiction book i would want to 
have lots of information given to me about any of those issues. But in my romance novels, I like that to be just a little bit sprinkled in and much more on our main romantic leads and their development of their relationship. And I just felt like we just didn't get, we just didn't get enough of that. I did not believe, um, I did not buy into Hattie and Lucian's relationship. I didn't feel the attraction between them. I didn't feel that they were falling in love. And I didn't, I felt really um, ripped off that I didn't get, I didn't get the romance part of this romance novel. So yeah, not a big success for me. Um, and then let's see, I finished this nonfiction book that I started reading in September, The Mosquito by Timothy Weingard. I've talked about this before this month. Um, this is basically a look through history and how mosquito born illnesses have impacted human uh, cultural and political and nation sort of nation development um, over time. So from way back in the time of the Roman Empire all the way up through present day, how have mosquito borne illnesses impacted the rise and fall of powers in the human world? And so that is very interesting to me. I like sort of these broad overview looks at history over a long period of time from the a different perspective from a different lens. And so I appreciated that. The problem with this was it got very repetitive. Um, I think that the author thought that he was funnier than what he was. Um, and I just wish that this book had been edited quite a bit down to the more salient information, because I do think that, you know, his points about how how much mosquito-borne illness impacted the winners and losers over time with history is a very well-made point, but he just he just beat on it a little too hard for me. Um, so A plus content, um, you know, C minus uh, delivery of that content in that one. And then last but not least, I finished a book off my ancient TBR. This is Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. And I buddy read this with Sandy from Miss Reads a lot. And we just finished this up. And um, this was a really surprisingly good read. This is, novel is creepy and weird and you don't really know what's going on. Um, you're following this woman icerly as she prowls the roads of, um, is it Scot yeah, Scottish Highlands, prowls the roads of the Scottish Highlands, picking up hitchhikers, only men hitchhikers. What is she doing with these men? you may ask. It's not clear at the beginning, but it becomes clear over time. What I loved about this novel was the slow reveal of information. As you read, you get little bits and pieces. The author drops these tidbits in, in a way that's like, there's no like info dumps. There's just little dribs and drabs of information sprinkled in as Icerly goes about her work. And you are sort of putting the pieces together to figure out what is going on with this. And it is very unexpected. It is very creepy. It is very weird. And it is very compellingly written. This is a book that I found really easy to read. It, I, we, Sandy and I both sort of flew through this. This book also has a lot to say about um, what is humanity and what do we feel for our fellow living creatures and how do we interact with those living creatures and what is right and what is wrong and how we interact with each other and other living beings. Um, it is also, uh, you know, some of the other themes that are explored here are what are we doing to the environment? What are we doing to our world? Um, and are we really sort of paying attention to that? Um, and yeah, I don't want to go into this any more than that because I don't want to give it away because I went into this thinking this book was going to be one thing and it very much was not. And so I don't want to give any piece of it away. But if you are up for a creepy, weird um, book that is going to make you think uh, and is a super fast read, I would totally give Under the Skin by Michelle Faber a try. I had tried to read um, The Crimson Petal and the White by this author, which is a chunky historical fiction novel. Not at all um, what this book is. Um, and had to DNF it. I just didn't like it. That was years ago. And so I went into this book with trepidation, not knowing what I was going to experience. But I really, really enjoyed the read of this. So yeah, would recommend Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. 
So those are the four books I've read recently. Um, I hope that you are all finding some good books to read and I hope that you all have a happy holiday and hopefully I will be back with some more videos sooner rather than later and hope you enjoy the vlog footage to come. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>